Gosh, that's nice and bright. Ah. Uh, uh, let me just check. Are we still? Yes. Okay, we're still in the light. We're still in the light. The light of the world. That was so weird. Okay, hi guys. Um, welcome back to another episode of Thoughts of Sam. As you can see, I am not in my usual location. I am literally stood in my garden because, although it's sunny right now, the British weather is unbelievably um, inconsistent. It's been raining, now it's sunny, it's really windy. The bees are out, pollinating the trees, which is great. There are lots of bees, and I didn't think there would be this year, so praise God that there are bees, because without bees, we don't get anything. Don't get food, don't get plants or flowers. I'm literally speaking out my bum, but uh, yeah, thank God for bees. Um, okay, so it's been two weeks, been, well, yeah, been about two weeks since I last filmed. I was gonna do one in Leeds, didn't do one in Leeds, got very busy, uh, went, went on a hike, as some of you may have seen, went uh, multiple pub lunches, watched the football. It was a good time, very good time. Um, back now, be doing lots of music this week. Um, thinking about, and I'd be keen to get your thoughts on this, um, potentially either making a new YouTube channel for covers of like, like I love music, okay? Obviously, some of you know, like I used to study at, at university. Um, I love music, I love secular music but not in when we talk about secular music not like rap and hip-hop and all of that like talking about rubbish stuff i'm more into like i love country music i love sort of love songs in the 1975 and that band called laney like i love sort of indie music and i love to create indie music and write and produce and um do covers of songs like that so i want to basically find a place that i can do that that's also sharing it with you guys but I was talking to my mum and we were both like, oh, I don't think I should post it on this channel because this is, like, the Lord has really set apart this channel for him, I believe. Um, every time I've tried to do something that is more secular on this channel, it just doesn't really go anywhere. And I believe that's because, like, I've been set apart to be the Lord's hands and feet. Um, but at the same time, I do still have an urge to, like, release that content and be creative. So whether I create a new channel... I don't know, would it, would it, like, if I posted it here, would it affect your view of this channel? I don't know. Um, I'm going to release it on Spotify anyway, but, like, some videos, I just think it's fun to do videos as well. But, anyway, that's just a random thought. Um, drop a comment below if you have any thoughts on that. But, today's episode, we are going to be hitting part two of Proverbs 31, because um, I left you hanging in the last one at verse 21. So, um... We're going to get off from verse 22 and we'll go through the end. And then I've got a few closing thoughts on this sort of series on biblical masculinity and biblical femininity. Uh, because it's been, yeah, I think it's been nearly four or five weeks since we've been doing this series. And then we'll be moving on to some other topics. Um, I want to do a Q&A. So at some point I'll get you guys to send in from some questions to my email and I'll just compile a list. I'm also going to do my testimony and I'm also going to do one on my routine and how I've been able to be consistent with getting in the word every day for the last, I don't know, 12 years of my life. Um, and like the things that I do enable me for me to do that and any tips and tricks and just some thoughts on daily Bible reading. So all of that to say, beep, um, let's go. Verse 22, Proverbs 31. If you have your Bibles, please open them. If not, what are you doing? Um, no, only joking. I will be reading it. So verse 22. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Um, purple was sort of this holy royal color um, back in sort of uh, the ancient um, Middle East and also for Israel. Um, so I think it shows that, you know, that, that, that idea of being sort of tasteful and set apart and caring about high quality things. Um, similar to some, some, I grew up with my parents and my family, like we didn't have loads and loads of money, but the things we did invest in, they were always high quality. Um, I think there's something about like, for example, you know, fast fashion or anything that's sort of like cheap off the internet 
it's not, you know, I'm not trying to be a snob here, but I think there's something noble about, you know, fine things. And obviously it says here, you know, she's clothed in fine linen and purple. There's something about that, which is a noble thing. Um, just a reflection. Okay, 22. Her hus- uh, 23, sorry. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. Um, you know, so again, something that sounds sort of out of place um, in this uh, in in this phrase or this section of scripture which is talking about women suddenly it's talking about her husband being respected at the city gate but i think that's really a reflection on who she is as a person that she um the way that she holds herself also is is a um is a reflection to her husband and that as her husband is respected she's also respected but also as she's respected he's also respected too so i think that's a, that's a great one um 24 she makes linen garments and sells them supplies the merchants with sashes um again she's 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 handy with her hands and and she's not afraid to sort of get in amongst it with um you know the town folk and the marketplace and you know it's just being assertive and and sort of having a little side hustle and being productive it's just really cool um she's clothed with strength and dignity she can laugh at the days to come this is one of my favorite verses it's just this optimism, this this confidence that she has in herself, in her family, in her circumstances, she never gets down about. Um, I say never. She she doesn't allow herself to get down for long periods of time because she's able to laugh at the days to come. There's this inner confidence in the fear of the Lord that through that heart posture of trusting God, she's able to whatever happens, um, even if some, there's a future outlook of of famine or war or you know, she's able to laugh. You know what? How amazing! If you think practically about that, imagine seeing a woman who, for me, you know, as a young guy, like seeing a woman who isn't down in the dumps, isn't um, constantly anxious about things, but she's able to, like, in the face of adversity or in the face of the future, she's just got this like swagger and this confidence about the things that are to come. Like, ah, oh, wow, uh, amazing. Um, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. You know, she's learned. Um, it says like the, the start of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, right? Um, and, you know, she's able to have wisdom. She's able to have faithful instruction and she's able to then pass it on to other people. It's not just for ourselves. You know, having wisdom for ourselves is, is great and having faithful instruction on our tongues is great for ourselves. We can speak that over ourselves, but ultimately it should be life-giving to other people too. So she's also outward looking. Um, she watches over the affairs of her household, does not eat the bread of idleness, you know, that classic stereotypical um, role of women, which many people hate, you know, the idea of a woman being the sort of the homemaker. Um, you know, I find that deeply attractive personally. Um, and it says here, you know, she watches over the affairs of her household. She she doesn't eat the bread of idleness. She's not just standing by in the corner doing nothing. Um, 28, her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Um, so important that, you know, I think this is sort of a command. It's, it's an observation, but it's also could be a command for children and husbands. Um, praise, praise the woman of noble character. Call her blessed. Um, the fear of the Lord is to be praised. So, twenty nine. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Um, a very famous verse we'll come back and, and really hit that one properly i'm going to do a whole section on that at the end of this video um 31 honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gates um you know so so good um at the end of the day we should honor these women um someone's getting beeping um and and the, the praise at the city gates you know that's all based on her work so it's this idea of like a, a, a woman of noble character like it, it, you can see it in the way that she acts it's not just a heart posture it's both but it's the way that she acts and it and it has offshoots into her works as well so that's Proverbs 31 um bit of a um bit of a it's really hard to focus when there's all these noises going on um bit of an exposition on Proverbs 31 now i wanted to wrap this up so um the main things i wanted to focus on is like what can we what can we sort of look at and identify as these like 
key traits of a woman who fears the Lord. So um, I'll just hit five uh, with a few thoughts on them and then we'll sort of wrap it up with a full overview of this biblical femininity and then we'll close. So um, number one, she doesn't fear tomorrow's troubles. When a woman fears the Lord, she will not be anxious about tomorrow because she will be able to do what God has appointed for her to do. So she's so focused on what God has for her and, and the role and the responsibility that he's given her that, you know, anything that sort of gets in the way or anything that's sort of going on, she's able to laugh at that because she's so confident in what she's been set apart to do. Um, she has practical wisdom. She's strong, both mentally, physically, intellectually. Um, you know, I, th I think it talks about the woman in Proverbs 31, you know, having strong, eager hands. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that she has to go lift weights at the gym or stuff like that. I think actually just the heart posture of wanting to serve and be proactive and take initiative naturally builds your physical strength. But I think also having this mental strength, having this intellectual strength often feeds into the physical because you want to be able to keep your body in a fit position and a, a place that you're able to um, work out those intellectual strengths. So it's really hard to do that if your body isn't allowing you to go to various places or to do certain things or you're frustrated because you're a sluggard and you can't sleep properly and, and you're eating the wrong food. Like that's going to directly affect your mental and your intellectual strength. So all three sort of wrap around. It's not that we necessarily just have to focus on the physical. Actually, they all sort of go hand in hand, which is great. Um, for she'll live for others. So great, sacrificial, similar, you know, as guys, we should be doing the same as, as all people. We should be fo focused on not just ourselves, but living for other people. Um, and then five, she, uh, sorry, finally, yeah, she cares for, she cares for the needy. Um, is a, is a massive one where many people, I, I, even just like a cultural thing today, it's really easy to be focused a lot on self-help or personal development. Um, which is very inward looking. It's quite introspective. It's also quite selfish sometimes. Um, and we can be sort of unaware of that, even if we're so focused on building ourselves up because we think we're doing it because we want to help other people. It's easy to get in a rut of constantly thinking about yourself and how you can be better because you're trying to do, be the best person for other people. Whereas in reality, like we should be focusing on other people at the same time rather than it being like, let me work on myself so I can help others. It's like, I'm working on myself and how can I help others in this, at, like in this moment, like at the same time. I've definitely fallen to pray for that in the past where I've sort of been so focused on the future. I'm never really able to look at the present and focus on, oh wait, no, there's literally something I can go help with right now rather than me being like, right, okay, once I'm like this, once I'm disciplined, I can then be the best version. You're constantly like, it's like a thread that you're trying to grab and it's getting like being pulled further and further away from you. Like you're just never actually getting closer to it. Um, so she cares for the needy. So that's amazing. Okay. Wrapping up with a three part summary of this whole passage. And then we will end. So number one, what does it mean to fear the Lord? Number two, why is it so important that we praise a woman who fears the Lord? And three, how can you tell if a woman fears the Lord? What does it look like in action? Um, number three, we've sort of already done. So we're going to go for, for number one and two. Um, so we can start with Exodus 20, verse 18. When all the people perceived the thunderings and the lightnings and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled. And they stood afar off and said to Moses, You speak to us and we will hear, but let not God speak to us lest we die. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to prove you, and that the fear of him may be before your eyes that you may not sin. So what does it mean to fear the Lord? Obviously, if we really look at that passage, Exodus 20 verses 18, it seems like there's a bit of a paradox. You know, it literally says, <laughs> but let not God speak to us lest we die. Um, like they're literally afraid. And then Moses said, do not fear for God has come to prove you that the fear of him may be before your eyes that you may sin. So there's fear and then there's fear and there's one fear that we shouldn't do and then there's one fear that we should do. So what is that? Well, don't be afraid of God and his voice and his commands, but be righteously afraid of his power to bring wrath against sin. It should not drive us away from God, but towards him and his mercy. So true fear of the Lord 
is not something that we should be afraid of, the way we have to run from him. It's actually the true fear of the Lord is something that we're so in awe of his power, his mercy, and his wrath against sin, which is righteous, that we should view life in a, in a, in a mindset that is holding that at the epicenter, right? So that everything that we do should be held in light of, wow, God is a just wrathful God who has the power to move heavens and move earth and create life. And if he is that powerful, if he is that uh, strong, then I need to be afraid. Like I need to be aware. I need to be vigilant. I need to be careful about what I do. But at the same time, that shouldn't make us afraid where we run from him. It should make us joyful that that powerful strong wrathful god is our heavenly father someone who loves us and that died for us and we should throw our bodies on his mercy and his grace um that's what it means to fear the lord um so a woman who does that is to be praised in the same way a man who does that is to be praised but obviously we're focusing specifically on on women here so number two um Three reasons for why praising a woman who fears the Lord is is good. So, number one, this is this is great. Um, it feels good, first and foremost. It sounds a bit weird, but we'll we'll unpack that. So, it feels good. Uh, praising a woman who fears the Lord, it, it also honors God, and it also encourages her work in the Lord. C.S. Lewis points out beautifully in his uh, book on the Psalms that praise is not merely the expression of joy, but it's literally the consummation of joy. Uh, A joy isn't fully enjoyed until it becomes an expression in praise. Uh, This is something which you may be aware of, like um, Desiring God, Pastor John, John Piper, talks about this Christian hedonism. Um, It's not about joy being complete um, in praise. It's It's not about joy merely in and of itself. It's that actually joy is complete in praise. So we don't just have joy, you know, it doesn't just end at joy. Like joy is like an emotion. It's a God-given um, gift that bubbles up out of us out of sort of nowhere. If joy, uh, you know, I've got a whole thing I want to talk about on joy because it's just, oh, it's beautiful, right? Um, how rich and deep the scriptures are on this point, joy and joyfulness and the difference between the two. But joy in and of itself is more of a it's a god-given wellspring of sort of these emotions this rushing of like oh i just feel so much joy but that's not fully complete until it leads to praise so when we feel joy and we're like oh wow lord (laughs) you know i just want to do it then you have this joy which is this sort of wellspring of emotion and then it leads you to lord you're so good or towards something like for example we can have joy and praise in so many things that God created in his world. Um, for example, I love Manchester United. You know, many people probably disagree, right? I love Manchester United. I love football. It has been an idol in my life in the past, but I feel like I've got a healthy relationship now because if I actually find it now an opportunity to glorify God, um, to praise him. So if my team score, I feel this joy. I feel this affection. I feel this wellspring of, ah, oh, because I'm looking at footballers or I'm, you know, feeling this flood of, 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 um, uh, joy when I'm with my parents and we're celebrating holding on to Man United beating Liverpool 4-3 um, we actually play this afternoon so we'll see what happens <laughs> got me made it. oh this guy bro <laughs> oh I love football so much praise the lord <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this guy. Oh, Lord, thank you for making his parents. You'll probably all laugh at me when I upload this and we lose. But, um, you know, I feel so much joy in that. But then it leads me to praise. Like, thank you, Lord, that I get to experience football. Thank you, Lord, that I get to experience sport. Um, and, you know, it's so fun. So I think there's just a point that I wanted to give. Like, that actually, when we, when we actually praise a woman who fears the Lord... It feels good because we're we're praising her, but we're also praising God indirectly through her. So that moves us on to uh, number two of this. So like, it honors God. Um, when we rejoice and praise God's handiwork, so His creation, the things He made, we indirectly honor God uh, in His creation. You know, same thing as my cat here, Ruby, 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 come here. 
you know, my cat's outside with me here. Um, you know, I can praise God for my lovely cat uh, because she gives me company. She, you know, she's just nice to be around, right? Um, you know, when I when I enjoy her and um, I uh, rejoice in the blessing that she is to me, it honors God. So similar to, to one, not only are we feeling good because we're honoring God, but also God is most <laughs> I'm gonna say it. God is most glorified in us when we're most satisfied in Him. Um, you know, I just can never escape Christian hedonism. I'm sorry. Um, and then finally, it encourages her, it encourages her walk. So when we praise a God fearing woman, it encourages her walk, which is great. I'm just checking my cat is not going to turn off my recording. No, she's not. Okay, great. Um, yeah, it encourages her walk, which is wonderful, and that's something that we should we should all be doing. Um, like any Christian, the desire to fear God over the world um, is a life is a lifelong battle, right? So when we can encourage her, um, it's gonna it's gonna strengthen her faith, which is then hopefully gonna lead her to being more of a godly, noble woman, which indirectly is gonna affect me to the point where I'm gonna have a more fulfilled life because I'm around a godly woman. Um, you know, there are always temptations to allure us away from the fear of God, temptations to fear financial uh, security more than we fear God, um, to fear rejection by our peers more than we fear God, to fear the loss of time spent in good deeds more than we fear God. Encouraging a woman in her fear of the Lord and then indirectly her noble character, we encourage her to keep fighting the good fight, which in and of itself is a blessing and a joy because my life is a lot better and fulfilling when I'm around a woman of noble character. Um, so literally to all people, women, children, men, sons, um, when, and it sounds a bit weird, but when we view a woman in light of death, i.e. what would life be like if she wasn't around? Um, like how would we, how would we want to respond to that thought? Um, death puts everything into perspective, right? So if I think of my friends or if I think of my mom or my granny dying, like, how would I feel? Would it, you know? Would I be really thinking about, oh man, that little small thing that she did that really annoyed me, or you know, getting bogged down with the petty things that I talk about, um, you know, that she does? No, actually, I should be praising her. Um, I should be reflecting and honouring her and thanking her for the way that she lives and the way that she lives these things out. Um, and not only will it strengthen her heart, honour the Lord, but it will also add great joy to your own life as well. So finally, just wanted to do a section on Proverbs 31, verse um, 30, which is obviously the classic. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Um, this is something that I think is um, it's talked about a lot within dating and marriage, right? The idea of like, who should we look for? What type of woman should we look for? Um, obviously from a guy's perspective, right? Um, and one of the main things that people say uh, is sort of the idea of charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord to be praised. And it's quite a pithy statement. Um, when I say pithy, it's sort of flippant. It's lacking nuance. It's just like a broad stroke phrase, which in and of itself is really helpful. I think it's really important to have those statements, but it's also important to break them down and to look deeper into them. So something I struggled with on that verse was basically... Um, it's quite easy to read it and think, oh, okay, well, we should avoid beauty and we should avoid charm because um, beauty is fleeting and charm is deceptive, um, or the other way around. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Um, so we should focus more on, or we should just focus on the woman who fears the Lord and we should, you know, almost villainize the, the charm and the beauty, which is definitely something I did in my life, um, which wasn't very helpful, was it, Rubes? Um um, so I, um, here to say, I think that's potentially a wrong way of viewing it. Um, so these things in and of themselves, beauty and charm are not wrong in and of themselves, but they are also not virtues in and of themselves. So beauty in and of itself is not a virtuous thing. Um, charm is not a virtuous thing, especially avoid or, um, free from fear of the Lord. But, um, at the end of the day, if you meet someone who is beautiful, who is charming, and who does fear the Lord, well, 
Uh, my email is Sam. <laughs> um, no, like it's just that's really what we should aim. What, what we should be aiming for is you know I'm not a woman, but I mean as a guy, you know, you could probably flip the same thing. Um, you know, uh, masculinity or strength or charm is you know it's deceptive and. Um, well, that when it says deceptive, it means like it's not just in and of itself something that's worthy or that's something that's going to be long lasting and helpful. Actually, the people who are most beautiful and most charming can often be the people who are lacking the fear of the Lord or who who don't care about the virtuous things because they're so focused on the beauty and so focused on the charm. They've had so much experience in growing in those things. Um, so that's why many people sort of see him as a red flag. But I don't I don't think that's helpful either, because what about all the godly people who do love those things and have grown in those things? Um, whether through experience or um, you know life giving things um, sorry my cat is literally about to kill a butterfly Rubes don't do it Ruby don't do it Rubes I want the butterfly to live okay I'm just going to allow God please protect that butterfly Amen okay, now I'm concerned um Oh, I've lost my train of thought. Thank you, Lord. Uh, let me go back to where we were in my head. Yes, beauty and charm. So there are people who do love to look a certain way or to focus on certain things. Or they're just naturally beautiful, but naturally charming. I don't think in and of itself that is a bad thing. But we need to be focusing on the fear of the Lord. And it's easy to get lost in the nuances. But um, focus on the fear of the Lord. Don't be afraid of people who are beautiful and charming, but test, check, make sure that they do fear the Lord. And obviously use this resource as we've gone through the list of, you know, what to look for. Um, so wrapping up the series on biblical masculinity and femininity. I don't know how long this one was. We'll see. Uh, I just wanted to reflect on, yeah, why we often talk about, you know, even like we are even looking for biblical masculinity and femininity. It's, it's always something that I think we look for as young people. It's like one of the most searched things on YouTube. It's like, what is biblical masculinity or what is biblical femininity? Like, there's there's such a desire to try and understand these things. Um, I think there's three things. Why? Um, wanting to honor the Lord and do what's right. Uh, to walk in the truth, so that we bring life rather than death, because that's what the truth does bring. And then thirdly, to attract someone of the opposite sex who is also acting these things out for the things listed above. Um, wanting to honor the Lord and the walk in the in the truth to have a good life so um i think those three those are often the reasons why we look for these things but biblical masculinity and femininity are not concepts inside a vacuum so i shouldn't just be trying to focus on biblical masculinity for just because i want to be the best biblical man i can be like that isn't necessarily a bad aim but it's not the whole reason why i should be um i want to pose the proposition that I think we should be doing these things, growing in biblical masculinity, growing in biblical femininity, in light of the opposite sex. So me growing as a biblical man should have offshoots because I want to attract, obviously, someone who fears the Lord, a woman who fears the Lord and who is growing biblical femininity, but also because I want to walk in the truth. I want to have a great life. So obviously, I, th I think that can sound quite uh, obvious, you know, like we don't just focus on these things for the sake of it, but many people do often focus on things for the sake of it, don't they, Rubes? Um, just because they hear you should go do something. And it's like, well, why? Um, so I think, yeah, just being intentional, thinking, right, actually, yeah, we should be growing in these things, biblical masculinity, biblical femininity. Why? Um, because of the other men and women in my life, I want to be the best version of myself for those types of people. Hebrews 10, 24. Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. I do not grow for the sake of merely growing. I grow in light of others. Um, which is obviously the Christian walk. We should be less focused on ourselves, more focused on how we can honor God and how we can other, honor others and love others around us. So there we go. Done. Woohoo. Five weeks of biblical masculinity and femininity. You definitely don't need to listen to this on 1.25 or 1.5 speed because I speak so quickly. Um, but yeah, had a lot to say um, in my back garden rather than the usual spot. Hope you enjoyed the cat. Hope you enjoyed my uh, thoughts. Like I said, if you had any thoughts on this episode or what I said at the beginning about the music stuff, really keen to hear your thoughts. Um, your comments, drop me an email, 
Um, and also Q&A will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. So I'll, I'll drop on my community page when I'm doing that and I'll get you guys to send emails in with Q&As. I'm also going to do my testimony, which I will probably do first before the Q&A because that will help probably with questions um, if you guys are watching. So I'm also going to start doing some more shorts. So editing some of these videos up, putting them as shorts so you can send to friends or just have um, sort of on your phone. And same thing with my worship videos as well, just trying to get on the shorts grind because I know it's helpful for the algorithm, but also it's just good content, isn't it, for you guys to have short form. So we'll be doing that. Um, all right, I'm going to pray and I will love you and leave you. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for this garden. Thank you for technology. Thank you for biblical masculinity, biblical femininity. Lord, help us to be God-fearing people who view this world in light of your glory and in light of your kingdom. Lord, when you will return um, at the trumpet sound, Lord, where every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, help us to not just focus on these things for the sake of being noble people or to look good in the eyes of the world or just to live a life-giving life. Lord, help us to grow in these things out of our fear of you, out of our affections for you and your name. Lord, that in whether word or deed, we do all these things to your glory, for your name and your fame, uh, to the honor of God, the Son, the Father and the Spirit. Father, we love you. We praise you bless this week. Lord, keep us safe. Keep us free from the enemy. Keep us safe. In your name I pray. Amen. Okie dokie, guys. I'm going to wrap it up here. Ruby's coming out. Ruby, come here. Come here. Say hi to the people. So say hi to the people. I don't know if you guys can see her. Ugh. You're a good baby, aren't you? Do you want to purr into the microphone? just nuzzling it. All right, guys, in a bit.